Well, the conservation to me, you want the conservation um, because you you paid for the soil, and that's that's where that's your lifeblood. So why not try to conserve it? Um, you know, you drive by or you see washouts or silting out and gullies, and you know that's that's all your topsoil just washing away. My name is Denver Davis. I farm in Harbleys and Allen County, uh, Ohio, and uh, our farm name is Davis Farms. But when I was a kid, you know, Dad, and they've always no-tilled beans. I mean, we've always kind of had that conservation mindset from the, from when I can remember. So maybe it was just, to me, why not try to take it a step further, you know, see what we can do with what we have. And it's a group effort. I'm not all by myself out here. So we had to find a way to make it work for everybody because we all want to farm, but trying, as everybody knows, the margins are thin. Well, it's so there's seven of us involved in the family operation. We all work together um, farming, you know. So we decided collectively, because we all work full time, that we don't have time to be out here working things and doing all the exercises. So that's why, that's actually what I would argue drove that, that conservation push, I guess, was everybody didn't have time and everybody wanted to farm. So why not find a way to make it work? And then, you know, after about year two, we started seeing some really, some real benefits. You know, uh, the soil didn't wash. Um, you know, it was a little more forgiving, if that makes sense. And then, you know, year four, which is where we were at um, when the contract that we were in was up, is like, man, we're really seeing a lot of, you know, of benefit here, even when you just like, if you take a shovel out there across the, you know, you can compare side by side anywhere almost around here um, and just see, you know, we have worms and we have, you know, we got all kinds of rabbits in the fall and there's no ponding. There's no um, washing. Uh, it, it just, it works as it's supposed to. The soil changes that we're seeing, and then in the fall, when we get a little wet, maybe, um, you know, we don't leave the cleat marks, we don't leave the tracks, we don't have all that issue that some people might, because our soil is actually working for us and has, has the ability to hold us up. What kept us going was we just started to see benefits. Um, and now we're to the point where I'm, I'm thinking about shifting away from some commercial fertilizers. Um, don't plan on going full hippie, but you know, um, we're gonna start looking at some of that because I think once you establish that baseline of a healthy soil and you have your microorganisms, and you have your soil health, that's when you can do that. Well, I guess what I would say to it, a person that's struggling to make that decision or to try something is this, if you think you want to start small enough and says you have to go, you know, and do a thousand acres of this practice, you know, dedicate 20, dedicate 40 of your toughest stuff to try and just stick to it. Um, patience in this system is a virtue. So it's, it's, like I said, it's all in what you believe in and how, how far you can push yourself to, to believe in that. A healthy soil is going to be one that stays where it's supposed to be, in my opinion. It stays where it's supposed to be. 